Hello students, today we're going to have a review on expanding and factorizing. If this is the first time you have heard of these two terms, I need you to go back to the lesson last week. Alright, make sure you finish your lesson from last week before you go on. Today's lesson will be a quick review on what you should have learned from week 4. The first key term that you need to know is expanding brackets. So, what do we mean by that? Let's have a look at a... If I draw you a rectangle, and um, I've got a line right here, just cut the rectangle into two smaller rectangles. Alright, so this length I'm going to call it A, this length I'm calling it B, and this length I'm going to call this C. And my question is, I want you to find me the area of this rectangle. What do we mean by the area? Oh, you have to think back to year 6, year 5 maths. Area is the space that the shape occupies, right? So I'm asking you for the area which is... Um, okay, this space is a rectangle. So remember the formula to how, to how to calculate the area of a rectangle would be length times width, right? So A times this length, which is B plus C. So the area in this case is A times B plus C, right? Remember, area is length times width. But if I separate these two little rectangles, right? If I draw them like this, if I draw them like this, this is still A, B, and C. Do you agree that the area of this and the area of these two added together are the same? Uh, yeah, my drawing is not the best, but this guy plus this guy should equal to this guy. So if I'm asking you to calculate the area of this whole thing, how would you do that? Well, length times width, right? So you're going to have A times B would be equal to the area of this bit, which is just A times B, plus the area of this bit, well this is A, so this has to be A, plus A times C. Okay? But this area and this area are the same. So you can say this stuff and this stuff should be the same. So what we are going to have is these two should be the same. Right? So what we are going to have is A times B plus C equals to A times B plus A times C. Okay? So, doing all that, I'm really interested at this conclusion. So, if we write that nicely, okay, I don't need all that drawing anymore. That's just the proof to show you why this is the case. I'm going to write that nicely. Okay? So that becomes A times B plus C equals to A times B plus A times C. Okay? And remember, I always say mathematicians are lazy. If they don't need to write, show, write something, they don't write it. We don't really need to write the multiply sign between letters. We've said it many times. You can just replace it by nothing. A bracket B plus C, that multiply sign is implied. Just like here, AB plus AC. We know AB means A times C. That's the conclusion you should have. Alright? This is the formula that you need to know. I need you to highlight it, put star, two stars next to it. And there's a funky name for this formula. This is called the distributive law. 
Okay? The distributive law tells me a bracket B times C equals to AB plus AC. Or in other words, it's saying if I've got something outside of the bracket, it means that something outside of the bracket is multiplied by the first term inside a bracket. Right, B. What's outside? Multiplied by the first term. Then you add whatever is outside multiply by the second term. Okay? This is the key of expanding and later we're going to talk about factorizing. Alright? From here going to here, this process is called expanding. Or what we are talking about now, expanding brackets. Okay? And if I'm going from this side to this side, we don't need this anymore, we only need it. If I'm going from here to here, we call this factorizing. Okay? But if I'm expanding or if I'm factorizing, I'm not changing the value of this thing. I'm not making it bigger or smaller. The word expanding in math is not exactly the same meaning as in English you're making something bigger. You're not changing the value here. You're changing the way it looks. But this and this are exactly the same thing. Factorizing is going back the other way. If I've got bits and pieces, I want to find a common factor and then chuck it outside the bracket. We're going to talk about factorizing later. But remember, the key point is expanding. We're changing how it looks. We're getting rid of the brackets, but we're not changing the value. We're not making this any different. All right? Okay, so I need you to know this distributive law. Very important. I'm going to show you a few examples on how to use it. Okay, let's look at the first one. I've got three bracket A plus four. Okay, and the question is asking me to expand it. What can we use? What do we need to use to expand it? We use the distributive law. Distributive law tells me if I've got A bracket B plus C, I'm going to multiply what's outside by the first term. Then I'm going to add what's in the outside by the second term. So A, B plus A, C. So I have to use that for our first example. What's outside? I've got a 3 outside. I'm going to multiply this 3 by A, 3 times A, or 3A if you are comfortable with skipping that step. Then I'm going to plus it with whatever is outside, which is still the 3, multiplied by the second term, which is positive 4. 3 times 4. Are we done yet? No, we're not. We need to simplify this. 3A plus 3 times 4, your times table 3 times 4 is 12, your answer is 3a plus 12. They look very different, but they mean exactly the same thing. There's no difference in terms of value uh, between these two expressions. Okay, this is what we call the expanded form, and this is what we call the factorized form, because 3 is a factor of 3a and 12. So let's look at this. The second one, I've got x outside, then I'm going to multiply x by the first term, which is x. So I've got x times x, right? Then I'm going to add whatever is outside, again is x, by the second term. In this case, you have to be super careful because the second term is not 5. The second term is negative 5. This negative sign is stuck to the 5, just like this positive sign is stuck to a 4. All right? This negative sign tells me my second term is negative 5. So we are going to multiply x by the second term, which is negative 5. x times negative 5. Okay? So, what are you going to have? x times x is x squared. I don't want you to say 2x, x times x is not 2x, 
x times so x is x squared, or x to the power of 2. Then this is the part that a lot of students are going to make mistake. I've got positive x times negative 5. A positive times a negative, what would the answer be? Positive and a negative becomes a negative, right? Positive x, negative 5, your answer will be negative something. x times 5 is just 5x, negative 5x. Or take away 5x. Negative sign is just a minus sign. There's no difference between a minus sign and the negative sign. Minus 5x is the same as saying negative 5x. So your answer will become x squared, take away 5x. Let's do a more, a, diff, a slightly more challenging one, but not too bad. I've got negative y, bracket 4 plus x. So, what is the factor outside? Is it just y? No, it's not. It's negative y. Remember, this negative sign is up to the y. Negative y. So I need to multiply whatever's inside by negative y. So I'm going to multiply negative y by 4 first. Right, that's the first part of the distributive law. Then I'm going to add whatever's outside, negative y, by x. Alright? Negative y times 4 will become negative times a positive becomes a negative, right? y times 4 is just 4y, right? Some of you will write y4. Please don't. You want to put the number first. So negative 4y plus negative y times x. So negative times a positive becomes a negative. y times x is just xy, right? So it becomes negative xy or take away xy. If you write y, x is the same thing, but just by convention, we always write the letters in alphabetical order. So we write the x first, but if you write y, six, y x is, um, you're not wrong. It's just um, commonly we use alphabetical order. Okay? So please don't mess up about the pluses and the minuses. Alright? Make sure. You keep in mind, if I've got a minus in front of a term, that sign sticks with this term, just like this negative 5. Okay, so we're going to do a few more examples. Alright, so let's do a few tricky examples. This time we're going to have negative 5 outside. I've got x minus b inside the brackets. So what's the factor outside? What's my a? It would be my negative 5. Not just 5, negative 5. Let's look at the terms inside. The first term is x. The second term is, is it just 3? No, it's not. It's negative 3. Remember, my second term is negative 3. There's a negative sign here. So, let's do that question. Negative 5 times x. That's this bit. I'm going to add that with negative 5 times negative 3. So negative 5 times negative 3. Negative 5 times x, I'm going to get negative 5x. Right? Negative and a positive becomes a negative. This is the part that a lot of students are going to mess up. Because I've got a negative number multiplied by a negative number. Negative by negative becomes a positive. I've got a negative number times a negative number, and we get a positive number. So negative 5 times negative 3, I know I'm going to get a positive number. 5 times 3 is 15, so my answer is plus 15, or positive 15. Right, you can see, oh, that's a negative here. But when I expand, it actually became a positive. But these two expressions, whatever's here, and whatever's here, they are exactly the same. There's no difference between these two. It's just written in a different way. Let's look at this last one. 
I've got negative a outside. The first term here is inside the bracket is negative a. The second term is negative b. So we've got a lot of negative. Let's see how we're going to deal with it. So negative a multiplied by the first term, which is negative a. And I'm going to add it. Negative a multiplied by the negative by the second term, which is negative b. All right, let's simplify it a bit. Negative a times negative a. Negative negative becomes a positive. We don't need to write the positive sign up the front because it's up the front. It's implied. So a times a is going to become a squared. A positive a squared, but you don't really need to write the plus sign there. Then I'm going to add negative a times negative b. Again, negatives times negative becomes a positive. A times B is just A times B, it's just AB. So your answer becomes A squared plus AB. Again, this and this are exactly the same. You can see all the negatives there, but, and in the ex expanded view, expanded form, there's no negatives. But the cool thing is, they are exactly the same thing. If you don't believe it, just put in some numbers for A's and B's. Put them in your calculator and press enter and you are going to get the same thing. Alright, so now um, I'm going to put some questions up, do some practice, pause the video, and then we're going to keep going with our lesson. Alright, this time you have to do two things for me. You have to expand and then simplify. Alright, so what do I mean by that? I've got something that you can expand. Then once you have expanded out the expression, I want you to write your answer in the simplest form. By, what do we mean by simplify? We always say collect like terms. Sounds familiar? I'm going to show you this example and hopefully um, could judge your memory on how to do these sort of things. So, expanding, we've done these a few times now, you should be able to do that. Whatever's outside, multiply by the first term, plus whatever's outside, multiply by the second term. In this case, it's not just 5, it's negative 5. So let's expand it first. I've got 3, multiply by x, is just 3x. I'm going to add 3 times negative 5. Very important that you have the negative there. Then, don't forget, I still have to add 4 later. Okay? So, now I've got 3x, it's just 3x. Positive 3 times negative 5. Positive times a negative becomes a negative. 3 times 5 is 15, it becomes negative 15, or take 15. I've got plus 4. Next step is very important, that's the simplify part. Simplify means collect like terms. Collect like terms mean we have to group similar items together. Okay, we've got apples and apples, oranges and oranges, we group them together. So. Do I have other x's going on? No, I don't. So this 3x is just going to become still 3x. But do I have similar stuff with this negative 15? Yes, I do, because I've got a 4 that they're just numbers. I can add these together. So I've got negative 15 plus 4. What's negative 15 plus 4? Negative 15 plus 4. So we have to go back to term 1 of um, year 8 or year 7 when we are adding and subtracting with negative integers. I've got a negative number plus a positive number. Is my answer going to become less negative or more negative? Think about this way. If you owe me 15 bucks and then you pay back 4 bucks, so how much do you still owe me? Do you owe me more or do you owe me less? You owe me less, right? 
So negative 15 plus 4, I'm going to get negative 11. This is the same as negative 15, take away 4, right? So negative 11. So your answer would be 3x take 11. So again, this expression and this expression, they are exactly the same. Okay, the outcome is going to be exactly the same. The value of this is going to be exactly the same. They just look different. Alright, let's try another one. I've got 4 bracket 3x plus 4 plus 7x plus 12. First step, I need to expand. So I need to expand what's here. Okay. What's outside? Multiply by the first term. 4 times 3x. Plus, whatever's outside, multiply by the second term. This time I'm, being, I'm feeling kind. Very easy, there's no negatives. 4 times 4. Then don't forget my 7x and the 12. Plus 7x, plus 12. Okay? 4 times 3x is 12x. Plus 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is just 16. Plus 7x. Plus 12. So expanding is done. Now I'm up to simplifying. Simplifying means I need to collect like terms. Group similar items together. Okay, so let's look at what are similars here. I've got a 12x. What is similar to this 12x? 7x, right? So positive 7x. I can add these two together. And what is similar to this 16? 12. So these two I can group together. Okay, so that's our last step. 12 lots of x plus 7 lots of x's I will have 12 plus 17, 19x. Then I have positive 16 plus 12, 16 plus 12, I will get 28. So my answer will become 19x plus 28. Alright, let's step it up a little bit. Let's try C and D. This time, I've got two lots of brackets, but the mass is not getting any harder. We are just going to expand these two, then we can simplify. So let's try it. Whatever is outside, multiply by the first term. Then whatever is outside, multiply by the second term. We're going to add whatever is outside here, multiply by the first term. Plus, whatever's outside here, multiply by the second term. Let's do it. That equals to 2x by 3y, which is the first term, plus 2x by positive 3, 2x times 3, plus, this is a positive 3x, so 3x times y. Then I'm going to add 3x times 1. Okay, let's clean this up a bit. 2x times 3y is the same as 2 times x times 3 times y. I can time similar items together. I can group the 2 and I can time the 2 and 3. Right? Because 2 times 3 is just 6. Right? Let's, if you're not sure why, let's have a look here. 2x can you still see? Yep. 2x times 3y is the same as 2 times x times 3 times y. When we are multiplying, we can change the order. We can go 2 times 3 first, then times x, then times y. It's the same as 2 times 3 times x times y. Right? I can multiply 2 and 3 together, become 6. Then x and y is just x and y. So... The quick way of thinking about this is when you are multiplying 2x by 3y, you can just times the numbers together, then you times the variables together. So it becomes 236xy. So that becomes 6xy. Then I have plus 2x times 3. Again, as I said, you times the numbers together. So 2 times 3 is 6, and then you have the x plus 6x. Then you're going to have plus 3x times y. 3x times y is just 3xy. Then we have 3x times 1. So if you're multiplying whatever by 1, it becomes that whatever. 
plus 3x. Okay? So now we need to simplify. There's nothing for us to expand anymore. We need to simplify. Simplify means we have to collect like terms. What are the like terms here? The first obvious one you can see would be these x's, right? 6x and 3 and 3x, I can group them together. But can I group this x and xy? No, I can't. x and xy are not similar. They're not like terms. You can't group this and this together. This is not just x, it's x1. x1 is a separate, is a different thing. But I can group this 6xy with this positive 3xy. So I can group this one and this one together. Okay, let's do it. 6xy plus 3xy becomes how many lots of xy's have I got? Don't be scared about this xy. xy, you can call this a, a dog, you can call it a, a rock, whatever. xy is a thing, it's a different thing. Okay? So maybe 6 pineapples plus 3 pineapples. So 6xy plus 3xy becomes 9xy, so I've got 9 lots of xy's. Then I have 6 lots of x plus 3 lots of x, then I have 9 lots of x. So that's my final answer, is 9xy plus 9x. Okay? So you can see we have done something really cool here. We have expanded and simplified this really long as equation, or oh, not equation, this expression, into something way more simple. I'll do one more with you, and I'm going to give you a bit of time to practice. So this time, similar stuff, but I've chucked in some minuses to make it more challenging for you. Okay, let's have a look at how we can do it. Again, the process is the same, you expand first. Expanding, you use the distributive law, whatever's outside times the first term, plus whatever is outside times the second term. So what do I have outside, or what's the factor outside? 4x. I need to multiply this 4x by the first term, and then I need to add what's outside by the second term. In this case, is negative 1. Not 1, it's negative 1. Alright, so let's, I'm going to step you through this. Okay, so, the factor outside is 4x, so I'm going to multiply 4x by 2x, right, then I'm going to add 4x by negative 1, so I'm going to multiply 4x by negative 1, okay, very important that you don't miss this negative sign here. Then. This bit is the tricky bit a lot of students are going to miss because the factor outside is not 3, not just 3, it's negative 3, okay? As I said, this negative sign is stuck to what's after it. This guy is the factor outside, negative 3, not just the 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply negative 3 by the first term inside 2x. We're still doing the same thing, but this time, whatever is outside is a negative number. So I've got negative 3 times 2x. I'm still adding negative 3 times negative 1. Okay, let's clean this up a bit. 4x times 2x, I can times the numbers together becomes 4 times 2 is 8. x times x is, is it 2x or x squared? You should get this right by now. x times x is x squared, or x to the power of 2. Alright, so now let's deal with those annoying minuses. 4x times negative 1. I've got a positive times a negative, your answer will be negative. 4x times negative 1. Whatever times 1 is just itself, but this is negative 1, so it's a negative version of itself, negative 4x. Then, don't mess up here, I've got negative 3 times 2x, 
Negative times the positive becomes a negative. 3 times 2 is 6, 6x. Negative 6x. Okay? Then I'm adding negative 3 times negative 1. Negative times a pop times a negative becomes a negative or positive. Negative times a negative, two negatives becomes a positive. So it becomes 3. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 3, positive 3. Alright, so my expanding is done. Is my question done though? Is this the simplest way I can write my answer? No, there is another. We can simplify a bit more. Because we can still collect like terms. We have to find the similar things together. Okay, we have to group the friends together and then we're going to leave the loners alone. The easiest one you can see would be the x's, right? I've got negative 4 here. Remember, this is not just 4x. This is negative 4x. The negative sign is stuck to this guy. So this is negative 4x. But I can group this negative 4x with negative 6x. Right, they are similar. Can I group these two together? x squared and x. Are they like terms? No, they are not. This is x squared. x squared is x times x. It is not like term with x. Okay? x squared and x are not like terms. Okay? If they're like terms, they have to have the same power. This time, this guy is not in the same power. You can't, you can't go, oh yeah, 8x, take 4x, and I'm going to have 4x. No, you can't, because it's 8x8. 8x squared. So this guy is by itself, because I don't have another lots of x squared. So there's no like terms of 8x squared, and there's no like terms of 3. So these two alone, as we can, it's easy for us to do, we can just write them down. So that equals to 8x squared. But I can simplify these two by grouping these two together. I've got negative 4x, take negative 6x. Okay, so it's kind of like you owe me 4 bucks, then you owe me another 6. So how much do you owe me in total? You owe me 10 bucks, negative 10x. Right? Negative 4 take 6 is negative 10. Don't forget the 3 there. You can't do much with it because it's a standalone. You just need to not forget to write it at the end. So your answer is 8x squared, take 10x. Plus three. All right. It looks a lot more complicated, um, but as long as you don't mess up these pluses and minuses, then you should be fine because the math is not any harder. But you just uh, need to be a bit more careful when you're dealing with these sort of questions. All right. So I'm going to put a few questions on the slides. Pause the video and have a go at them yourselves. All right, so now we're going on to factorizing. Again, if this is the first time you've heard of factorizing, you need to go back to your lesson from week four. So after you have been through the lesson from week four um, and finished the worksheet from week four, I want you to go on to my lesson, which is a review on what you, you should have known. All right? So factorizing is the opposite process to expanding. Previously, we talked about expanding is going from this to this. What if we need to go back the other way? Okay, that's what we call factorizing. So it involves finding the highest common factor. You need to find the highest common factor for the terms. Okay, so in this case, if I've got A, B, and A, C, we need to find the common factor. The highest common factor in this case is A. We're going to chuck the A outside the bracket. Okay, that's how we're going to do it. That's the first step. Right? Then we can divide 
each term by the highest common factor to find what's inside the brackets. Okay? So I think it's easier for us to go through an example. So let's say if my question is my question is, let me just pause the video to write something. Okay, so let's say my question is I want you to factorize 6x plus 10. So this is the factorize, this is the expanded form, sorry. This is a, this is it looks like this form. I want to go back this way. So what do we need to do? The first step is to find the highest common factor, your HCF. So I need to find the highest common factor between the first term and the second term. Okay? So let's look at but the problem that I have is this first term involves an x, this second term involves a 10. So what I need to do is I need to find the highest common factor of the number part. Then I need to find the com highest common factor of the letters part. Then I multiply the two together. So firstly, I want to find the highest common factor between 6 and 10. What's the highest common factor between 6 and 10? You have to think about um, primary school maths now. 6 and 10. What is the highest common factor between these two? What is the biggest number that you can divide into 6 and 10? Well, obviously, it's just 2, right? And what is the highest common factor between x and 1? It's just one. Well, it's just one, right? Because in this case, 10, there's no x in there. 10 is just the same as 10 and x, so it has to be one. So the highest common factor between these two, you can just multiply the two and the one together. So the highest common factor between 6x and 10 is two. All right, so we have identified this is the highest common factor. This is the stuff that I want to put outside of the bracket. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put this 2 outside of the bracket. 2 bracket something. What do I do here? What do I, what would this first term be? How do I get this first term? The way I get this first term is I'm going to divide this guy by the highest common factor. In this case it's 2. So I'm going to divide 6x by 2. 6x divided by 2. 6 divided by 2 is just 3, so it's going to be 3x. Right? And then 10 divided by 2. Right? This is, I want to get this second term inside the bracket. How do I get the second term inside the bracket? I'm going to divide what's here by the highest common factor. So I'm going to divide 10, positive 10, by 2. 10 divided by 2 obviously is 5, is a positive 5, so it's going to be 2 um, bracket 3x plus 5. So what we are saying is this guy and this guy are exactly the same. How do we know? Let's check it. From, from this going back here, we can expand. We can always expand to check whether or not we are factorized properly. Okay, whatever is outside times whatever is inside, 2 times 3x gives me 6x. 2 times positive 5 gives me positive 10. So I know I have done my math properly. So the challenging part about factorizing is, is hard, and sometimes it's hard to find the highest common factor. The highest number that you can divide into both of these terms. Okay, so let's do another one. This time I've got 16fg. Uh, maybe maybe make the number nicer. I mean, let's make it 14FG. Take away 21GH. It looks really disgusting, but the mask is the same. So, we need to find the highest common factor of the number part. Then we're going to find the highest common factor of the letters part. We multiply those two together. That would be the highest common factor between these two terms. So, highest common factor between 14 and 21. 
14 and obviously it has to be 7. Right, 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times two, 3 is 21. That's the highest common factor. So, what about the highest common factor between Fg and Gh? Fg and Gh. What is the high, the biggest number that you can divide into Fg and Gh? It has to be G, right? Because G times F is Fg, G times H is Gh. So the highest common factor would be G, which means the highest common factor between this 14Fg and 21Gh is the 7 times G, which is 7G. So I know now I have found the factor is 7G, the highest common factor. I found this A here. So I can chuck this 7G outside of the bracket. So what I'm going to have is 7G outside of the bracket. And I'm going to put, um, I need to find out what are the terms inside the bracket. So, 14FG divided by 7G. 14FG divided by this 7G. If you look at that, 14FG divided by 7G. You divide the numbers and then you divide the letters. 14 divided by 7 is 2. Right, 14 divided by 7 is 2. FG divided by G. Well, we can divide the G by the G. G and G are going to cancel. G divided by G is just 1. So, yeah, you can say they cancel each other out, leaving you with F. So, it's going to be 2F. Then, don't forget this is a negative. So, you're going to have negative 21GH divided by 7G. So, the second term is negative 21GH divided by 7G. Negative 21 divided by 7 is negative 3, right? 21 divided by 7 is 3, but negative divided by positive will get negative, negative 3. G and G are going to cancel out because G divided by G is just 1, leaving you with H. So your answer would be 7G bracket 2F take away 3H. How do we know? Have we done it properly? We expand to check. So from here to here is factorize. The question is only asking you to factorize, but you can do the expanding to check if you are if you have done the math properly. How do we do that? Whatever's outside times the first term plus whatever is outside times the second term. Let's check quickly. 7g times 2f. 7 times 2 is 14. G times F is GF or FG, so the first term is correct. Second term in this case is negative 3H, so don't forget this negative sign. 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. G times H is GH, so I've done this properly. Alright? So which means we have factorized correctly. I'm going to do a few more examples with you so that you are familiar with this process. It is not easy and a lot of senior students are struggling with this concept. So it's very important that you guys get this right now. Alright, so I would like you to ask me questions or ask your teachers questions in this process. Uh, you're not entirely sure of this process, make sure you get this right now. Okay, so now we're going to do another two examples. Factorize 2x plus 6. So we need to find the highest common factor between these two first. So the highest common factor between 2 and 6 is just, it has to be 2. Right? You can divide 2 into 2, you can divide 2 into 6. So the highest common factor between 2 and 6 is just 2. Then we have, we have to look at the variable part of the letters. I've got an x here, I don't have anything there, so it has to be just 1. So the highest common factor between x and 1 is just 1, which means the highest common factor between 2x and 6 has to be, 2 times 1 has to be 2. 
So, if you've done it enough times, you don't even need to write this stuff out. You can just go to this quickly. Oh yeah, 2x plus 6. I don't have any letters, so I know the highest common factors won't have a letter in there. So I don't have any letters at the second term. I know the highest common factor won't have any letters in it. So 2, and basically I'm just finding the highest common factor between 2 and 6. In this case, it has to be 2. So, what do I need to do with this highest common factor? I chuck this outside of the bracket. So I'm going to have 2 outside of the bracket. Then I need to find what are the two terms that should go in there. What do I need to do to find the first term? I need to divide the, expand, the first term in an expanded form by the common factor. 2x divided by 2. 2x divided by 2. What's 2x divided by 2? 2 divided by 2 is just 1. The 2's will cancel each other out. I love cancelling things, it makes things so easy. 2 divided by 2 is just 1, which means 2x divided by 2 is just x. 6, or positive 6 divided by 2 is positive 3. So this one is super simple. 2 bracket x plus 3. Next one, now we have letters and numbers in for the two terms. So let's look at the highest common factors for numbers. Highest common factors, I've got 12 and 8. So the highest common factor, if you're not sure, you might need to do that process of listing out all the factors of 12 and then all the factors of 8 and then find the highest one. Okay, so 12, what's tw what are the factors of 12? Well, I've got 1, obviously 1 and 12. I've got some um, 2 and 6 and then 3 and 4. Then look at 8. What's, what are the factors for 8? Well, 8 is 1 times 8. 2 times 4. Yeah, that's it. And what is the highest common numbers here? 4. So the highest common number between 12 and 8 is 4. Highest common factor, sorry. Then I need to look at the letters. Highest common factor between GH and G. Okay? Between GH and G. What is GH? What are the factors of GH? It's just G and H, right? G times H will give me G. What are the factors of G? It's just G times 1. So, the highest common factor has to be G. Right? GH and G. The highest common factor is G. So, what is the highest common factor between these two terms then? Multiply them together, right? Highest common factor is 4 times g, which is 4g. So, what do I do with this 4g? I'm going to chuck it outside of the bracket. 4g, bracket. Then how do I populate what's inside the bracket? I need to divide the first term in the expanded form by the highest common factor. Then I'm going to divide the second term by the highest common factor. Let's do it. 12GH divided by 4G. Okay, 12GH divided by 4G. Let's have a look how we do that. 12GH divided by 4G. I really like to write division using the fraction line, or we call it the vincula, because it makes things so much clearer. 12GH divided by 4G. Divide numbers by numbers, letters by letters. 12 divided by 4 is just 3. Right? 4 divided, 12 divided by 4 will give me 3. G divided by G is just 1, or they cancel each other out, so don't forget my H. So 3H. Then I've got negative 8G. Divided by 4G. I need to work on the second term now. Negative 8G divided by 4G. Negative 8 divided by 4. Negative divided by positive becomes a negative. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Negative 2. Okay, so that becomes 2. G and G cancel each other out. So this becomes 1. So my final answer would be 4G bracket 3H take 2. That's all. So it looks really scary, but once you break it down, 
It's not really that bad. We're, doing, we're not doing anything new. The process is always the same. You find the highest common factor. But how do we find the highest common factor between the terms? We need to find the highest common factor between the numbers. Then we need to find the highest common factor between the letters. Times them together. That would be the highest common factor between those terms. Chuck them outside the bracket. Okay, you're half done there. What do you need to do? You need to divide each term of the expanded form by the highest common factor. And then you just put them nicely inside the bracket and you're done. So, I would check my answer to make sure that I've done it properly. Checking the answer is, this process is called expanding. Right? So 4G times 3H, 4 times 3 will give me 12, G times H is GH, 12 GH. So I know my first term is correct. 4G times negative 2, remember, that's a negative sign here, negative 2. 4G times negative 2. Positive times negative will become negative. 4 times 2, 8. G, just G, so it's negative 8G. Alright? So whatever we're doing, we have done it properly, right? Because we can see the factorized term and the expanded factorized form and the expanded form are exactly the same. Right? When, and when I, ex, when I expand my factorized form, I get the expanded form. Okay? Um, pause. Uh, I'm going to put some questions on the slides. Pause the video and have a few uh, have a practice yourself. The only way you can be good at this is by practicing. It is a challenging concept, but you want to get it right here, so it will make your life much easier when you go into um, senior school or when you go into year nine or, or senior school. Yes.